I was contacted by a friend of the university who uh, presented this opportunity to partner with the Historical Society of Harbor Springs. And so we saw this great opportunity to engage our students and to augment their education and have them become involved in the exploration and the preservation of the AHA, which was a boat that was built by Ephraim Shea. Ephraim Shea, he made his name in locomotives, um, getting timber out of steep areas, so smaller locomotives using his engines. With that success, he was able to uh, indulge in his other interests, uh, naval architecture being one of many. My reaction to seeing the AHA for the first time was how unique its shape is to modern vessels. The shape is very whale-like, which makes sense, the inspiration at its time, and it's also one of the first metal pleasure crafts. So it definitely wasn't made to be like every other boat of its time period. The bow is very much uh, a wave-piercing bow that you see in a lot of contemporary vessels these days. But when you start looking at the stern, you start to see some, some odd shapes there, uh, more organic, a lot of flowing features. It's about 50 feet long. It has a full midship section in order to fit the locomotive and it's had several different deck designs through its life. I don't know precisely why Ephraim built the AHA. He lived in a very beautiful part of the world that's surrounded by water. And I expect that he just had a personal interest to be able to design a vessel that he would be able to operate um, near his residence. So the goal of the AHA project for us was to kind of explore how hydrodynamically efficient Ephraim Shea's AHA was and kind of validate, you know, what speeds it could have gone in Little Traverse Bay when it was in use. The process to measure, model, and test the AHA started with us going out to Harbor Springs as they have it on display there. We did length measurements and we did beam measurements um, and all the physical measurements that we could collecting hydrostatic data, so the weights data and you know where the center of gravity, center of buoyancy is, as well as collecting wave data, kind of establish what kind of sea state it would have experienced in Little Traverse Bay. We looked at historical weather buoy data for several years, took all those data points, and then processed it through MATLAB to create those different conditions. Of course, being from the 1890s, there were no structural or engineering drawings, so everything had to be recreated. Thankfully, the Historical Society at Harbor Springs had thought ahead and they actually paid for a 3D scan of the vessel, so that saved us a lot. And then, of course, that 3D scan is of a hull that is from the 1890s. It's been run aground, it's been left abandoned, it had bullet holes in it. The nose was canted off by probably five to 10 degrees because of how it had been left for a while. So it's not something that we could just go and immediately take that scan, even if it gave us perfect geometry that was usable and have it produced. The students had to use their engineering mind, their naval architecture senses to basically say, if this vessel were in pristine shape, what would it have looked like compared to what does it look like now? At first I focused on uh, creating the 3D model of the hull and kind of preparing it for manufacturing, you know, making actually solid surfaces. And this was kind of an interesting process just because the hull being so old, there was no 3D models or any lines drawings of it. And Kobe took that full scale model uh, in Rhino and scaled it down to eight feet, which is about the size that we wanted to test in the tank. And then we sent it off to be manufactured outside of the US and we got it here. We did modifications to the model, um, and then we tested it in both calm water and sea keeping. The towing tank is a 110 meter long by six meter wide by three and a half meter deep body of water. Built originally in 1904, it is 750,000 gallons of fresh water. A basin like this is used for anything from education all the way through commercial work. We do governmental research as well, and we can test anything that is pulled through the water, moves through the water, and anything that is under the waters. We did 
did two types of tests on the AHA. We did calm water resistance. So how did the AHA uh, fare when being pulled along calm water? Um, what were the hydrodynamics of it? And then we also did sea keeping tests. So that was the AHA in actual waves. We ran the wave maker um, and created a specific set of waves, a specific height and a specific distance apart um, in accordance with the weather data that I was researching about. Um, and we ran the AHA through that as well. The most exciting part of this project to me was when we finally got the model in the water. It was a long process to finally see the model go into the water and to see slow motion videos of just basic wave cases that they would have seen in Lake Michigan when they were uh, using it to see how dynamic that was. You know, the bow was, you know, dipping into the water. By looking at the data that we acquired uh, through testing, we're able to tell that the vessel did not go as fast as was historically recorded. This shouldn't be too shocking. The 1890s, early 1900s were the era of sensational news. So 20 knots was a bit of a stretch for this vessel. Uh, it was probably operating closer to eight to 10 knots. Any kind of waves, they're quickly gonna start coming over the deck, splashing up against the deck house and getting all of the passengers wet, cold, and uncomfortable pretty quickly. As far as a vessel from 1890 that was all steel, required no ballast, and was powered by a locomotive engine, extremely successful. By modern day standards, it would be something that you would take out for a nice calm cruise around the lake. A project like this is very important for a student's education because it allows them to take something such as an abstract thought taking an idea and seeing it all the way through to the end of reality. So it's a, a full circle of what it really means to be an engineer. We help them with how they approach uh, problems uh, and from an engineering standpoint, how they interact with their peers, how they can uh, write reports, how they can present their findings, so with confidence, um, how they can weather changes. It was exciting to work on the project as it was kind of my first hands-on experience um, being a naval architect. This is the first time really like making a boat from nothing, doing the weights diagram, and then testing it in the tow tank. Having the opportunity to explore this really old hole from the 1800s, that's kind of a once in a lifetime experience. The work kind of felt like a detective case to me where we didn't have solid data on this model. So being able to test it here at the MHL was pretty insightful to me and also very satisfying. The AHA project has definitely kept not only Ephraim Shea's history, uh, but Michigan Maritime history alive. I do think that the AHA project really solidified uh, my desire to go into naval architecture and marine engineering. Being able to actually experience it and on a hands-on team was very insightful to how naval architects and marine engineers work. We always strive to have real-world application to put our students into internships in the summer and have them be full, as connected as possible with industry. It's the perfect bridge between the fundamentals and the theory that we learn in the classroom and its application to answer new questions that were brought forth to us by the Historical Society. <laughs>